everybody. This is Nate Miller for Inside the Box, Sports Inside the Box with Nate Miller. There you go. <laughs> Almost had the uh, title wrong. So I hope you're all having a good day. And um, I know I am. I know I am a week from this, uh, this coming Monday. So let's see. Today's Thursday. I'm f- filming this on Thursday, but it'll uh, be uploaded on Saturday. Um, a week from this next Monday, I go to Florida for the Christmas holiday. Uh, I'm going to Disney World on December 28th. Could not be more excited about that. I get to see some family um, that I haven't seen in a long time. A long time. I am um, going to visit my mom. I haven't seen her in a year. Uh, I'm going to see my brothers and their wives. I haven't seen them in two, maybe three years. So, um, so yeah, it's going to be good. It's going to be good. I'm excited. And um, this is the last week that you're, like, for a while that you're going to see me with long hair. I'm actually getting my hair cut tomorrow. Uh, much needed, much, much needed hair, haircut on uh, my part. And um, so, yeah. So some good stuff coming up. And um, a lot to talk about this week as far as Baseball news. It is the off season, but there's still a lot to talk about. Um, of course, yesterday Garrett Cole signed his big contract with the Yankees, nine years, three hundred and twenty-four million dollars. Three, like, think about that. One year. Oh, no, 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 I'm sorry. Nine, nine years, nine years, three hundred and twenty-four million dollars. That is unbelievable. And then you had, um, you have Anthony Rendon. He signed, also signed yesterday with the Los Angeles Angels of Anaheim. They'll always be the California Angels to me. uh, For seven years and $245 million. So, actually, give or take, (laughs) give or take, you know, two or three million dollars. I could be wrong, but uh, I don't have the numbers right in front of me. So, and it's just, I don't care how long I do this. I really don't. Um, I will never begin to fathom those numbers. Never begin to fathom those kind of numbers. I will probably never make that much money. I'd like to. (laughs) I would like to, but I don't know if I will or not. And uh, it's just, I. It gets to a point where you got you have to think like, do these guys you know remember what it was like before they had money, before you know they were professional ball players? And this goes for any professional athlete, not just baseball players. Do they rem- like? Do they truly remember? Truly remember just being broke? <laughs> you know. Um, that would be something that would be hard to forget for me, you know, where, like, where I came from before I signed the big contract and, um, you know, how it felt to, (laughs) how it felt to constantly be fighting for a chance. And these guys have been given that chance and they've negotiated their contracts and they have walked away with big, big money. It's just, And we'll see. (laughs) I mean, we'll see if they live up to those huge contracts, especially Garrett Cole. His contract for nine years, nine years, 300 and some odd million dollars. Who knows? Who knows if he will pitch that long? Well, I'm I'm sure he will if, like, if he has his way, he will. <laughs> if he has his way, he will. But sometimes it, things don't work out like that. Uh, sometimes injuries get in the way. Age gets in the way. Family circumstances get in the way sometimes. Um, we've had players that have retired because uh, front offices haven't treated their families right. Um, and it's just, it's crazy. I mean, things get in the way. Yeah, these guys are professional athletes. They're on top of the world as far as money, but they're human just like everybody else. Um, they have families. They have problems. 
they have, you know, whatever else have you. And it's just unbelievable. It's unbelievable how much things can change in an instant. And uh, it's just, you know, obviously, you'd love to, I mean, you're you're drafted in the major leagues. You hope to go on to have, you know, a 20-some-odd-year career, make millions and millions and millions of dollars. But just things don't always work out that way. It's crazy. It's crazy. I mean, we've had players that have been in their prime and then had their careers cut short due to um, injuries. Arm, arm problems, knee problems, whatever have you. Uh, off the field problems sometimes. And it's just unbelievable. Unbelievable. But in the meantime, good for Garrett Cole. Good for him. Uh, signing that big contract with the Yankees. So he will get to uh, go from um, Houston to the Yankees. And... Um, and I'm sure, I'm sure there's a part of him that'll miss Houston, but a part of him that is just glad to be uh, moving on, uh, especially with the problems that Houston is having right now and the investigation of them stealing stealing signs. And um, you know, <laughs> it's crazy. It is crazy. And um, as far as Anthony Rendon, um, he wanted at least a seven-year deal. That was, um, in fact, the Texas Rangers were going af after him uh, pretty aggressively. And then he and his agent, Scott Boris, I think, uh, told the Rangers that he was looking, um, the Rangers offered him a five-year deal. But his agent and him, himself, uh, they told uh, the Rangers that he was looking for at least a seven-year deal. He had leverage. He had leverage in that uh, in that situation. He was a free agent, just coming off a World Series win. Actually, I don't know how how much that factored into it, but um, but still, I mean, he was kind of due to get his big contract, and he got well, he got at least what he, he at least what he was asking for. Uh, don't know how much in terms of money that he was asking for. He got more than two hundred million dollars, so I'm. Sure, he's satisfied with that, but um, I don't know how much he was asking. I know he was at least asking for seven years. Like, no matter where he went, he was asking for seven years. And um, it was just, uh, you know, it fit. It fit with the Angels. And <laughs> I'm sure, you know, I'm sure the Rangers would have loved to sign him. But he was just a little bit out of their price range. And so many people. So many people are getting on John Daniels about this, about not signing, you know, good players and, you know, not, you know, freeload or freeloading, not freeing up payroll uh, to get these guys. And, you know, my response to that is just, it's not up to him necessarily. I mean, yes, he signs the players, he trades them, he cuts them, whatever, but he has to have room to do that, he has to have approval from ownership, just like any other GM in sports, really. I mean, he has to get these guys to sign off on any move that he makes. Um, if it's, you know, out of reason. If, you know, if he wants to offer a player nine years at, you know, $245 million, he has to get uh, permission from the ownership group to do that. And so many people just don't understand it. It's not up to the general manager, always. Um, they have, to, like, the only... Yes, they're in charge of personnel decisions, but um, they have to answer to ownership. So, it's just... It's crazy. So many people forget that. And I'm sure... I'm sure if John Daniels or any other GM had their way, they would have unlimited resources, unlimited money, unlimited, you know, whatever, um, to make these things happen, to make these deals happen. But it's, it doesn't always work that way. It's just like in life, you know, <laughs> ideally you would love to have 
millions and millions of dollars, but things don't always work out the way you want them to. I mean, you have to work hard. I mean, if you get to the point where you can make millions and you are making millions, more power to you. But it doesn't, um, things don't always work out like that. I would love to make millions. Maybe I will someday. Who knows? Crazier things have happened. Maybe I'll be the host of The Price is Right. Crazier things have happened. <laughs> I look like Drew Carey. I could do it. Um, <laughs> Drew Carey in the early years, uh, before he lost all that, all that weight. <laughs> and uh, so, but yeah, good for Garrett Cole, good for Anthony Rendon, and I believe the next free agent that has, um, that's going to be signed is Josh Donaldson, third baseman. Um, he's played with Atlanta. He's played with Toronto. Uh, so we'll see. We will see. And it's just it's a lot of off season left. A lot of off season left. Um, we're about halfway through December. Uh, spring training starts um, for pitchers and catchers for like about halfway through December, and then um, rest of the players report a couple weeks later. Spring training games start around the beginning of March. Actually, no, 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 I'm sorry. Spring training might be moved up a little bit this year because the regular season starts at the end of March. So they usually have about six weeks of spring training games. Um, five, six weeks, somewhere around there. And um, then they they head north to their respective ballparks or um on the road to their respective destinations, and then they start the season. So, uh, for me as a fan, right after the holidays, that's when the off season starts to pick up a little bit. And um, so, um, if I can make it through the holidays without missing baseball, which is hard, then I'll, I'll be okay. <laughs> you know, right around January fifth, sixth. That's when I start to really, you know, get ready for the season. <laughs> um, I know, I, like, the average fan might be thinking, well, the season doesn't start until, you know, late March, early April. What are you doing? Like, season starts in spring training for me. And it does a, for a lot of other people, too. Um, so, awesome. Awesome, awesome. I'm looking forward to it. Looking forward to it. Even though it seems like just yesterday that uh, the World Series ended with the Washington Nationals winning their first World Series. Uh, not only appearing in their first World Series, but winning their first World Series. Um, where the home team didn't win a single game at all. Um, every time Houston won, it was in Washington. Every time Washington won, it was in Houston. Um, so that was a very interesting thing. A very interesting thing to witness, and I doubt we'll ever see it again. Uh, it's just one of these, one of those things that makes baseball great. You know, on any given day, you'll see something that you've never seen before, and probably will never see again. So, awesome. <laughs> um, as you can probably tell by now, I love baseball, love hockey. In fact, on February seventh, I am taking my girlfriend. Um, Laurie to a Dallas Stars game at, at American Airlines Center here in um, here in Dallas. Looking forward to that. They're playing the Minnesota Wild, and uh, I will be there with uh, my lady friend, and we're we're just gonna have a great time. We're gonna have a great time. She's never been to a hockey game. I've been to I've been to a few, and I love them. They're a lot of fun. <laughs> a little cold, but a lot of fun. So. In fact, um, let me know in the comment section, what is your favorite sporting event to go to? Baseball, basketball, hockey, soccer, um, whatever it is, let me know in the comment section. And, um, so, <laughs> and, um, I will, uh, uh, get ready for next week's episode and then, uh, don't know if I'm going to be able to get to do a uh, video from Florida, but I'll try. I, I will try, and I will uh, um, give the Mute Mogul Media Network a heads up on that, and uh, we'll see what happens. 
But until then, I will see you guys later.